My sister-in-law suffered a tragic miscarriage, so we let her back into our lives only to find out she was telling my four-year-old son that she was his real mother, and my husband knew the whole time. My sister-in-law despised me for years, but after she suffered a tragic miscarriage, we welcomed her back into our lives. Unfortunately, she began telling my child that she was his real mother. David and I have been happily married for eight years, and we have a four-year-old son named Tom. Tom is a lively, imaginative kid, very attached to me and a bit of a mama's boy. I cherish this bond knowing that as he grows older, his interests will change and he might not want to spend as much time with me. David and I make a great team managing our home, raising Tom and pursuing our career seamlessly. This harmony stems from David's respectful and communicative nature, which has fostered a strong partnership between us. However, despite our smooth sailing, there's an ongoing issue with David's sister, Kathy. From the very beginning, Kathy has been difficult to get along with, maintaining a cold attitude towards me. David had warned me early on that while his parents would likely accept me, Kathy would be tough due to her protective nature. He was right. When we first met, Kathy bombarded me with questions about my background, all the while acting unimpressed and condescending. She would also bring up David's exes in our conversations, comparing them to me as if it were normal. During one dinner, she even suggested David join her and her friends on a girl's trip, claiming he needed to clear his head before committing to me. This remark annoyed me and David noticed, asking her to back off politely. This brings me to a point of contention with my husband. While he does defend me, his affection for Kathy sometimes prevents him from setting firm boundaries. This emboldens her to keep pushing, believing she has his best interests at heart simply because she's the older sister. From that first dinner date, I knew Kathy and I didn't like each other. It stung a bit, but I wasn't about to bend over backward to win her over if she had already made up her mind. So despite this, I always remained polite during our encounters, though she never made it easy. One incident that stands out is David's grandparents' anniversary party. The entire family was invited, and I attended as David's plus one since we'd been dating for a year by then. Throughout the party, I enjoyed chatting with his friendly and easygoing family. And the one person who completely ignored me was Kathy. I noticed and tried to stay out of her way. When everyone gathered for a group photo, Kathy loudly pointed me out demanding I step out of the picture. She suggested David might break up with me and didn't want one of her brother's bimbas in the family photo. I was mortified as everyone around us looked uncomfortable. David tried to argue, but Kathy kept interrupting, saying I was just a random stranger and shouldn't have been at the party. Humiliated, I excused myself to find my car keys, determined not to spend another minute near her. David and his parents followed me, apologizing profusely. His mother tried to persuade me to return, but the moment was ruined. I heard his grandparents scolding Kathy, making me feel even guiltier for spoiling the day. I left immediately considering breaking up with David, thinking I couldn't handle his sister's behavior. However, David showed up at my place later with flowers and pastries, apologizing sincerely. He told me everyone had reprimanded Kathy for her rudeness, and he had threatened to cut ties with her, which made her cry. David expressed his frustration with his sister's antics and reassured me he didn't want anything to do with her anymore. So we had a long talk, and I felt comforted by his support. In the following days, David kept his promise. So we stopped seeing Kathy altogether, and he ignored her calls. When she showed up unannounced at his house, he changed the locks and asked his parents to talk to her about respecting his privacy. With his parents' support, Kathy had no choice but to accept that her brother wanted nothing to do with her. So we hoped this would make her reconsider her behavior, but it had the opposite effect. Kathy started calling and texting me, leaving threatening messages and blaming me for everything. So the breaking point came when Kathy showed up at my workplace one afternoon, demanding to see me. Thankfully, my manager intervened and kicked her out, but the incident left me deeply shaken. I told David that I had no choice but to break up with him to escape his sister's harassment and consider taking legal action against her. David was devastated, pleading with me not to end our relationship and promising he would handle the situation. David then convinced his parents to arrange a meeting with Kathy at their home. During this confrontation, his parents, fully aware of what Kathy had been doing, made it clear they wanted nothing to do with her unless she changed her behavior. They all warned Kathy that her actions were borderline crazy, and if she continued, they would support my decision to take legal action. Miraculously, Kathy finally broke down and admitted she needed help. She confessed to feeling out of control and revealed she had lost her job and had been unemployed for months, worsening her mental state. David's parents took immediate action, admitting her to a psychiatric hospital where she could be monitored. David reiterated that he did not wish to maintain contact with her, which Kathy reluctantly accepted. She sent me an apology text that felt somewhat insincere, but I hoped for her sake that she would heal. When David and I finally married, we chose not to invite Kathy, 
Even though she had been discharged and seemed to be doing better, I wanted nothing to do with her and everyone respected my decision. Kathy did send flowers to congratulate us, which I appreciated. After we returned from our honeymoon, Kathy announced her engagement. It surprised everyone, as no one knew she had been dating. We were cautiously happy for her until we learned she was marrying a man she met in the psychiatric hospital. This man, James, was schizophrenic and alcoholic with violent tendencies, according to his doctors. Understandably, David and Kathy's parents were concerned. Kathy planned her wedding for the following month and only invited David, excluding me. While I wasn't surprised and felt relieved not to have to make an excuse, David was offended by the exclusion and chose not to attend. Those who did attend the wedding later told us it was a disaster. Kathy and James were heavily intoxicated during the ceremony and couldn't even properly repeat the vows after the priest. During the reception, James continued drinking until he was blackout drunk, then started ripping open his shirt and pants while everyone watched in horror. Being schizophrenic, James didn't like the attention and suddenly attacked a server, accusing the innocent bystander of looking suspicious and hiding something. His family managed to calm him down and paid off the server to avoid pressing charges. This incident deeply scarred everyone, raising serious concerns about Kathy's safety. If James could attack a stranger, what was to stop him from attacking Kathy? David and his parents tried to talk to Kathy about her husband's disturbing behavior, but she was convinced she could change him. Despite their warnings, Kathy believed James would never harm her. Unfortunately, she was wrong. Over the years, James isolated her, cutting off contact with family and preventing her from seeking help. Though there were instances of police being called due to their violent arguments, Kathy refused to leave him, convinced he was the one for her. Four years ago, I became pregnant with Tom and we were all overjoyed. I wanted Kathy to be part of my baby shower, so we sent her an invitation. When we received no reply, David drove to her place to check on her. He discovered that James had cut her off from any communication with us and thrown away the invitation. David confronted James, but Kathy defended her husband, refusing to see his wrongdoing. Frustrated, David left and we lost contact with her. Even after Tom was born, we did not reach out and her parents eventually stopped trying to convince her, hoping she would be okay. The past few years with Tom have been peaceful and full of love. David and I have found a wonderful rhythm in our marriage and Tom keeps us busy with his curiosity. David's parents visit every weekend to babysit while we have our date night, allowing us some time off and giving the grandparents quality time with Tom. Everything was going well until eight months ago when Kathy showed up at our doorstep, muddy and disheveled, with no shoes on. We immediately let her in and I fetched her a blanket as she was shivering. We hadn't seen her in years and were at a loss for words. David comforted her, asking if she was okay. Kathy looked numb, staring into space. Eventually, she revealed that she had just miscarried. We listened in shock as she recounted how she had gotten pregnant a month ago, initially believing James would be happy. However, he grew increasingly paranoid, fearing the baby would take her away from him. They fought frequently, and he even threatened to poison her food to cause a miscarriage. That day, she woke up feeling uneasy, and at the doctor's, she found out she had lost the baby. Numb and sick, she couldn't drive home, so she walked, eventually ending up at our house. She must have walked at least 20 blocks barefoot, but she couldn't remember why she had no shoes on. I felt so sorry for her and immediately gave her a hug. At first, she hesitated, but then she hugged me back. So we sat there for five whole minutes as Kathy cried into my arms. We knew then that this was her way of asking for help. David seemed ready to confront James directly, but I convinced him to call the police and notify their parents who were better equipped to handle the situation. So parents were incredibly grateful to have their daughter back and assured her of their unwavering support. When the police took her statement, they were as shocked as we were by the abuse Kathy had endured. James was arrested despite his protests and threats, continually denying his involvement in her miscarriage. However, Kathy's toxicology report revealed she had been poisoned, leading to the loss of her baby. So in the end, due to James's mental issues and his incompetence to stand trial, the judge sentenced him to an indefinite stay in a psychiatric facility for treatment. Although this was frustrating, we were grateful to have Kathy back safe and sound. By then, all my previous animosity towards her had vanished. As a woman, I felt immense sympathy for her and wanted to move past our history to help her heal. Kathy also seemed calmer and no longer hostile towards me. When we felt she was ready, we introduced Tom to her, hoping it would aid her recovery. She grew very close to Tom in a short time, which none of us minded initially. This should have been my first red flag. So over the weeks, she found ways to spend more and more time with my son, often showing up unexpectedly at our house. Staying with her and David's parents made it easy for her to drive over unannounced. She insisted on giving Tom baths and reading his bedtime stories, gestures that initially seemed kind but gradually felt intrusive. Kathy's increasing presence started to feel odd. She visited almost daily, staying longer than necessary, 
bringing toys and gifts for Tom and always seeking involvement in his daily routines. She would comment on his clothes or hairstyle, suggesting how Tom would look better, which bothered me. While I appreciated her efforts to bond with Tom, it began to feel like she was undermining me again, this time through my son. And then my maternal instincts kicked in and I talked to David. He assured me that I might be overthinking and that his sister was just trying to cope with her pain. He reminded me of her recent loss, making me feel guilty. I decided to let her be, thinking if taking care of Tom made her happy, what was the harm? As days went on, I tried my best to accommodate her constant presence. She started looking after Tom daily while we were at work and even took him to the park in the evenings. Sometimes when I came home, I noticed that my son no longer greeted me with the same enthusiasm. He wouldn't run up to me and instead looked at me with curiosity. After Kathy left, I would try to talk to Tom about his day and whether he had any issues with Kathy but he was less engaged and seemed sad. As his mother, this change in his behavior worried me deeply. However, when I discussed it with my husband, he would gently dismiss my concerns, assuring me that Tom was just growing up and I was overthinking. The nagging feeling persisted, so I confided in a coworker who suggested installing nanny cams from Amazon in Tom's room and our living room to monitor him. I thought this was a brilliant idea and promptly bought two cameras. I didn't inform David about this, not wanting him to dismiss my concerns again. Yesterday, after Tom went to bed, I decided to check the nanny cams. While David watched TV downstairs, I retreated to my study to review the footage, which included audio. Initially, it was just Kathy playing and caring for Tom, appearing very good with children. However, I was shocked when she pulled a book from her purse, one I hadn't seen before. We usually have age-appropriate books for Tom, but this one was different. She read the book to Tom before his nap. As I listened, I realized the story was about adoption and how a mother sometimes gives her child to another mother to care for. Kathy added her own commentary, telling Tom that this was why she had left him in my care years ago because she wasn't ready then. My eyes widened in horror as she continued, claiming that she would always be his real mother and no one could love him more than she did. She kissed his forehead and left him to nap. My hands shook with anger as I realized what she had been telling my son, causing his strange behavior. This poor child must be feeling incredibly confused. I was ready to confront David and demand that Kathy never be allowed in our home again, but I held back. So instead, I decided to take a day off to spend with Tom and understand what telling him. When I informed Kathy that she didn't need to babysit, she reacted anxiously, insisting that she loved spending time with Tom. I firmly told her to back off, wanting a day alone with my child. David asked if I was okay and I reassured him that everything was fine but that I needed a break. Later, I took Tom to his favorite park and we spent the day playing, eating pizza and laughing. I wanted him to feel safe before broaching the conversation about what his aunt had been telling him. So he got a bit quiet. I reassured Tom that he wasn't in trouble and that he could talk to me about anything. So that's when he opened up. He told me how Kathy had been trying to convince him for weeks that she was his real mother. Though he didn't truly believe it, she also told him that I would eventually leave him because only real mothers love their children. Her insistence made him scared to ask me about it, fearing I might actually kick him out. He said he loved me and didn't want to go live with Kathy. Hearing those words broke my heart. I stared at his tear-streaked face, seeing a small and vulnerable child instead of the joyful and playful boy I knew. I knelt down, gently took his hands, and assured him that everything would be okay, so we would get through this together. I hugged him tightly, feeling the weight of his fears and pain. I felt like a failure for not protecting my son from this psycho. I promised him that he had nothing to worry about and that David and I would take care of it. However, my son then told me that David already knew about all this. I asked what he meant and he said, I asked daddy, and he knows about this, but he told me not to tell you anything. So my blood ran cold as I realized that my husband, despite knowing what his sister was up to, had chosen to protect her instead of our son. He knew everything. I couldn't let my son be around these people anymore. I didn't want him to be confused and frightened about his own mother. So as I was his mother and it was my job to protect him from this, I quickly drove home and packed our bags. I told my parents we were coming over and that if David asked, we would say I missed them and wanted to spend time with them. But luckily, my parents are very supportive and immediately said yes. As I write this, I've already explained everything to my parents and they are as shocked as I am about what Kathy has been telling my son. So David did call when he came home to an empty house, but I tried to sound normal telling him I needed a break from our place and work. So he sounded curious, but I assured him I'd stay with my parents for just a few days. We rarely fight, so I guess he didn't think much about it even though my behavior must have seemed strange to him. I am so conflicted right now. I have no idea what to do. How should I confront the situation? Am I the asshole for distancing my son and me from my husband's crazy sister? Update one. Wow, I woke up to over 600 comments on my post. 
I can't believe so many people on Reddit have come across my story. I used fake names throughout, so hopefully none of David's family members will realize it's about him. To those criticizing me for not talking to my husband first, I assure you I would have if my son hadn't already tried to talk to David. My mother's instinct told me that since my husband knew for weeks about our son's changed behavior and kept gaslighting me, a confrontation with him wouldn't have been productive. I needed to get my son out of the situation immediately and he is now much safer with my parents. No one can feed him lies here and that's all that matters. Kathy has been trying to contact me, sending multiple messages, insisting she needs to see my son and how much she misses him. I plan to put an end to this at the upcoming family get-together at David's parents' place this weekend. This gathering has been planned for weeks because David's grandparents or parents are visiting, and I thought it would be a nice time to spend to set photo should be. However, given recent events, I will use this opportunity to speak my truth and ensure Kathy stays away from my son for good. Update 2, I'm back with an update. I finally confronted David as planned during the family get-together. I was so nervous beforehand, but I decided to bring the nanny cam recording as proof. To cut to the chase, I called out Kathy in front of everyone during lunch. She looked shaken and tried to laugh off as if it wasn't a big deal. Then I showed the nanny cam footage and explained that I had recorded what she told my son. I watched the color drain from her face as I sent the video to the family group chat for everyone to see. Her parents were horrified as they watched her try to convince my son that she was his real mommy. Next, I confronted David and him how he failed to protect our son. My husband looked really guilty but tried to justify his actions, saying he didn't think much of it and, and thought it would help his sister cope with her grief. He felt torn between supporting his sister's recovery and telling me about it, ultimately choosing to keep quiet. I told him that because of his actions, I no longer trusted him and couldn't let our son be around him or his family. For the first time in a long while, I saw my husband break down in tears, but I stood firm. I made it clear that I couldn't let my son grow up in a family where his father refused to stand up for him to protect his mentally ill sister. David and Kathy's parents and grandparents apologized to me and assured me they would make sure Kathy stayed away from our son. Kathy looked utterly humiliated but didn't have the decency to apologize. David kept trying to justify his actions, but I ignored him. I left shortly after the confrontation, feeling that my work was done and wanting nothing more to do with any of them. Update 3. I see some of you are confused about my decision, so I wanted to clarify, yes, I plan on divorcing my husband. I know many of you suggested giving David a second chance since this wasn't entirely his fault, and I agree that he is a good man. However, being a good man doesn't automatically make him a good father. Just because we never had issues doesn't mean he was a good father to Tom. He should have addressed this from the beginning when our son came to him with doubts instead of spending weeks trying to cover it up and gaslighting me. Both Tom and I can't trust him anymore. I welcomed Kathy back into my life with open arms after what she went through because as a woman, I felt sorry for her. But in the end, she proved why I never liked her in the first place. I understand that Kathy's abuse was extremely traumatic, but that doesn't mean our son should have to suffer for it. She is an adult with mental issues, and although we thought she had improved, she clearly hadn't. However, what really surprised me was my husband. So the fact that he prioritized her mental well-being over our son shows why he should never be around Tom. He was always such a supportive husband, and I thought I could trust him, but his actions regarding Kathy have shown otherwise. I promise that from now on, I will protect my son no matter what. I am confident I can get full custody of Tom if I expose his family history during the custody battle. 